A lot of the questions that I got in that Q&A centered around Courtney and I's relationship. You guys wanted to know where it was at. She's obviously worked with me for the last 18 months. You see her in all of the videos, but what's actually the situation? What's actually going on between the two of us? And in this video, I wanted to give you the truth. I wanted to let you know where it sits on a relationship aspect of both Courtney and I. Monday morning. Yeah. Bit of a different Monday morning because we were running well, you, you weren't running, were you? You didn't have to say that, I won. <laughs> I ran my own marathon this weekend. <laughs> I ran the Gold Coast Marathon yesterday. And it was a great day. There were so many runners out of our run club running and my goal was to try and go under four hours. And I ran a four hour 12. So I just missed out. 42 Ks, if no one doesn't know. Yes, uh, which in miles is, <laughs> I don't even know. I'll put the miles up on screen. Um, whatever a marathon works out to in the US metrics. Um, I got, have a look. At, I don't know if you can see on camera. My knee is really fat. Can you see it on camera? Not really. No. Oh, now I'm seeing it a bit. Yeah. Maybe if I get in the light. Yeah, you can. It's huge, and it hurts, and it was bugging me from about 32 kilometres onwards. And I realised with 10 k's to go uh, that I was going to have to run at a relatively quick pace compared to how I was feeling to try and break my goal of sub four hours and. I knew it was going to be tough. I was cramping, my legs were sore. So it didn't really go to plan, but that means that I'm going to go back and run another one because I need to do sub four hours before I finish running marathons. So I'm really super sore and tight and tender today, but it's a Monday morning, Courtney's in. Mm. We've had a fantastic, I didn't work for the weekend. I took it off from three o'clock. I did the post on three o'clock Friday, Courtney. Yeah. And then I haven't been back since right now. Yeah, so, so good. Two and a half days off. But if we go over here and we have a look at the calendar, we are flying on eBay. It's so cool. This is one of the best aspects of selling on eBay. We are sitting on for this month, 3,682. We're averaging $490 a day. And if you guys have been following this channel for any length of time, you know that we average about $350 a day. So to have two and a half days off where I wasn't doing a thing, um, you know, Courtney wasn't working either and we've been able to average almost $500 a day, just nuts. So I thought we'd turn the camera on, we'd do a bit of a what sold today with the top 10 sales that have come through. Uh, we've had 27 sales that Courtney's gonna be putting into the mailbag. But these 10 that we've got to talk to you guys about are just really nice, juicy sales that will be kind of cool for you guys to see. Um, so yeah, look, it's 500 bucks a day that we're putting in to get these numbers. We list $500 a day. And last week in a vlog, to end the vlog, I showed you um, Aiden coming in with a massive private pick deal for us. We paid $600 and we just got an, an oodle amount of stuff, so much stock. And we've been listing that up all week at $500 a day. And we've still got, you can pull the camera over here, we've still got a bit of stock on the floor here, um, which we just need to sift through. There's some consoles, some cameras, some, uh, I think there's some accessories like some guns for the PlayStation or something like that. Um, we've also got up here some unlisted stock where the hats used to be. Uh, we've got a bunch of DVD tubs that are unlisted. Uh, and then we won't show you it, but in the living room, we just tried to clear out this space so we could walk around with the camera. But there is so much stock in there to bring in and continue to list up. And yet we've already had last week $3,600 worth of sales. So that basically at the end of the day, the deal has been incredible and it's been allowed us to get us off to a flying start for the month of July. So let's not muck around anymore and we'll give Courtney the first item. Have a chat about some sales that have come through. All right, first one, number 10. Um, actually, first, a lot of these sales today, quite a few of them have come from Aiden that we only got last week. So very fast turnaround. And this is actually one of them. Die Hard Trilogy 2 on PlayStation 1. Um, yeah, so we only listed this. I don't want to open that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> midweek and we've got a $40 sale price for this so that will just go into a box for around 8 to 10. And why do we why do we do boxes for PS1 games? Uh, just because it's like this glass. Mm. Was it glass or plastic? plastic? Plastic. Sorry but if you like in the post if it, something hits that it will crack it for sure so definitely not in a satchel. Put a box, bubble wrap and butcher's paper. Yeah in box. really fill it in but we can put it into a box that's small enough that it's a small satchel rate. Yes. So it goes for that $8.50 odd with the Band 5 Australia Post. So just make sure you're doing that with PlayStation 1 games. Mm. Um, when you go into these sorts of games, like a PS2 or a PS3, uh, you can use the envelopes. 
um, but we just don't do that with the PS1. So that's just a little bit of an info for you. Yeah. Now, in that haul, we also got a really large allocation of anime. A heap of anime DVDs, and I've never heard of this one. It's called Ergo Proxy. Uh, Ergo Proxy, this is the complete collection, which is always something I'm excited about when I see complete collection or complete series. Um, so there it is there. Every single disc is in it. Aiden had some really, really, not only good quality products, but also really good condition um, quality products. So even if you found a really great game, let's say Simpsons Hit and Run, for instance, on the PS2, if it was all scratched up, you would either try your best to get a buffer into it and give it a good clean, or you ultimately just wouldn't buy it because you're not going to get the advertised sale price if it's in poor condition. Um, so really pleasing to see that Aiden was buying well, which is a large part of the, the reason why I wanted to go ahead and buy his deal. But um, this DVD alone just went for $40. And we, we listed it, I think, on Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Uh, and this one, as opposed to the PS1 going into a box, this will just go into a medium tracked envelope. Uh, it'll cost us nowadays about $6.50 odd um, to send it off, but not too bad for a $40 sale price. All right, another video game. This is through another bulk deal, but not through Aiden. This was from Selwyn. Um, this is a really good average sale price. It's sold for $48. Um, we probably only listed it two weeks ago as well, so pretty far sell through as well. PlayStation 5 on the road truck simulator. I haven't heard of it. <laughs> On the road, truck simulator, there it is there. PS5, I will say out of the PS5s that we picked off Aiden, we've actually only got this one left. Um, so that's the only game that remains out of the PS5s. We do have some PS5s down the bottom there as well, but we didn't get all of those off Aiden. So ultimately, it's a game, it's a console. The PS5 stuff just sells really, really fast. And as Courtney said, 48 bucks for that one. Pretty unreal. Yeah. Pretty unreal game, this one. Uh, I, I actually showed this, I think, in the video where we went in through uh, the private pick. We didn't actually dig through the private pick. I just showed it all coming into the garage. Um, but fortunately, they've all sold, so we can just show you in a what sold video. Um, Super Drop Zone on the SNES. Um, this one here with its box, it doesn't have its card insert. Um, as you can see there, it's got its manual, which is cool, um, but it only has the game loose. Um, so the plastic insert could have got us a few more bucks, but we sold it for 66 um, so $66. What I will say from this year is we have now, I think, got about 40% of our sales coming in the video game category. And that was 40% last year was DVDs. So there's been a real shift in the way that we've been buying and selling. Um, it's now a lot more focused on the video game category. And the DVDs are still sitting at around 20%, but they have fallen away quite a bit because we're only buying the box series sets uh, because the individual DVDs around that 10 to $15 um, can't really go into a $6.50 envelope now with the Australia Post price rise. Um, but you can still sell cheap video games in bundles. So I think if you're in media, you should be focusing more on video games as opposed to DVDs for that very reason. It's been a very big shift for us, all due to Australia Post doing what they're doing at the moment. Um, so you've got to adapt is basically what I'm trying to say. Like if we didn't have the Australia Post price rise, um, we would still continue to source those DVDs in thrift stores because they are still out there. It's just they're no longer profitable. So we've had to stop buying them. And the substitute has been video games, which pretty much you can buy any collection out there and you can sell them off individually or in bundles. And they both go on to sell really well on eBay. So as Matt was just saying, this is the type of DVD sets that we are actually purchasing and selling more so than the individual um, DVDs. This is another Aiden purchase though through the bulk buy. So only last week, really fast turnaround. The, is it Leverage? Leverage. Complete series, $70 sale price for that. So good. very, very good. That will go into a small satchel. So that $9. Um, yeah, another good one through Aiden. Yeah, that's amazing. Box sets, only ones that are selling well at the minute for us and the only ones that we're going to continue to source. This was really cool. This isn't something I've ever seen before, actually. So this is a Rip Curl Game Boy Advance. So really, really nice. Very, very clean, tested and in working order. Um, haven't seen the Rip Curl markings on it. So it's a special edition. These things sell great as they are. It doesn't need to be a special edition for it to move fast. But because it was, I knew that we'd turn it around in a couple of days. And yet, like everything else, it was another aid and purchase. Um, so this one's come through and been able to sell for us for 120, but it's also going over to the US and we picked up an extra $25 in international shipping. So I really do encourage you guys to turn on your international shipping. And I was actually only saying it recently in a mentoring session 
um, try to just even turn on the local markets, New Zealand and um, Asia. If you turn on New Zealand, Asia and America, the price points aren't too gnarly to ship small items. And if it is international shipping, try and ship something that's less than a kilo. Um, the price doesn't blow out too much. If you're not doing calculated shipping, you might be setting a flat rate for your shipping. Um, over a kilo gets pretty exy. And it also means it's a lot harder to sell the item individually, uh, internationally. But something like this, it's a very lightweight item and to send it off to the US, it's probably only gonna cost us about 25 bucks. Um, so pretty even price to, to offer for international shipment of this item. Um, but it goes on top of the 120 bucks, which included domestic shipping. Like we're anticipating to sell this for $10 domestically and we get that money still plus the international sale. So I can't recommend it more. About 10% of our sales are international sales um, and there's some big, big benefits to it because people all over the world are going to want to buy your items. So you've got to make it available to them. All right, next one are these vintage Simpsons comics. So they're all like the 1990s. Um, we've got, we had Bartman Simpsons comics and we also had Radioactive. Um, we got a $130 sale price for these. So that's 28 of them, average about $4 per comic. We don't really buy comics that much. And how long, we've had them for a little bit. Not a crazy amount of time. I'd say actually only about three to four weeks. <laughs> so it's, it's been... Mind. Well, yeah, because this one was actually like... one that I did in a private pick. And, oh, okay. And I listed it up the minute I got it. Yeah. Um, okay. And we don't have too many comics in store. Yeah. But I decided to do these as a bulk allotment rather than splitting mm. them up into Bartman, Radioactive Man and Simpsons Comics. I just thought, you know what? A Simpsons fan yeah. is going to want to just buy the lot. Yeah. So we just did a big bulk bundle. There's Radioactive Man there. There's some cool comics and it's vintage 95 as well. Yeah, pretty cool. I think it was a bit of a steal at 130 bucks for whoever's grabbed this. Yeah. Um, and we, we did pay up. I think we paid about two bucks a piece. So I think we paid like yeah, right. 50. Um, 50 into 130. So mm. I thought that was a pretty cool sale when I was on the, um, on the track at about 3Ks in. Mm. I had a guy say, hey, are you the Aussie flipper? Oh. And it was a guy, a viewer of the channel named Nick. Yeah. So if Nick, you're, if you're watching, That's I'd love funny. to know what time you actually finished the marathon in. Um, he was feeling pretty good. He was from Sydney. He'd done a bunch of training. And yeah, I met him on the track at the 3K mark. It was pretty cool. 3Ks in or 3Ks to the end? 3Ks in. If I was yeah. 3Ks at the end, I was not communicating. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was dead yeah. at that point. Um, but yeah, shout out to Nick. Yeah. And please put in the comments, Nick, if you're watching this, what your time was. Um, hope you did really well. Um, this one came through for 150, 150 bucks. Nintendo DSi, complete in its box with its stylist, with its manuals. Another aid and purchase, just flying out the door instantly fast. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. It's a console. They sell well. Video game category continues to move. Mm. Been a lot of the same stuff selling in uh, in this video today. So what does that tell you? Mm. Hunt down some video games. All right, what do we got here? He's got some trendy boots and a vest. Um, this was one buyer, so he brought both of these. Um, Matt found these at separate op shops about two weeks ago. So this Kathmandu vest. Is that a duck? Is it a duck feather? Yeah, it is. It's a duck down 550. Duck down. I spoke about this in a vlog. Yeah. There it is there. Duck down 550 and it's an XL, which is fantastic as well. Yeah, you brought it for 15 and we got a $70 sale price for that. Um, quick turnaround as well. And then these... Oh, RM William boots always do really, really well, but Matt purchased them for 70, so a bit higher in the op shop, but he knew that they would turn around and we got a 140. 140. Yeah. Oh. Sale price for them. So 210 collectively for both of them and one postage cost. That's the best, best thing about it is there's the same, like I actually accepted this knowing that this was being bought with it. Yeah. So I knew that we could save money on postage by having them go together. Yeah. Um, I had them listed for 180. Mm. So I took 140, which is quite a big drop off. Mm -hmm. But I knew that we were going to save money, obviously, adding that to it. Yeah. So it meant $210 worth of revenue, and we paid 85 to get it. Mm. So it's still going to be quite profitable, but there was a sell through rate. In the vlog, I spoke heavily around how quickly this would turn around. Yeah. And it only took the two weeks like I thought it would. Yeah. And then these RM Williams boots, um, very similar story. You're always going to turn them around if they're in good condition at the right price. Yeah. Um, so there's two items outside of video games and DVDs that we will always pick up, even though we only have these three tubs of clothing. Um, we are still picking up these sorts of great, high profitable, high revenue type items. 
So it's good to see them sell to the one buyer. Mm. Now, I've never alluded to this in the video, but this item has sold for over $300. It was another Aiden purchase. It's a Super Nintendo Entertainment System SNES video game, and it is one that I've also never heard of. It's called Super Chase HQ. There it is right there. Super Chase HQ. Really, really good condition, this game as well. <laughs> there was a comp around 390 bucks. We listed up for 350 bucks, and I think we were sitting in, something that I also checked for, for price points is what are the active listings. I think there were only three available on eBay. And we put it up for 350 and we were the second best price out of the three. We were right in the middle. Uh, and then I offered a 5% off uh, best offer when I shot out my best offers and it brought it down to 332. We got the buyer. So this sold in about three days. $330, a rare SNES game. Um, incredible. And, and we'll put that into a small satchel with a lot of bubble wrap, Courtney. Mm. Um, I think it can go in a small satchel. I don't think we need to put it in a box. Or do you want to? Because it's a really expensive one. I reckon we can put it in a box. Yeah, okay. We do have some boxes up here that will fit. Um, so, yeah, okay. We'll put it into a box. But you could put it in a satchel yeah, with yeah. a shit... I shouldn't swear, but a shit ton of bubble wrap. Yeah, um, but maybe not. But maybe we'll just put it in a box. We don't sell games over $300 no, too often. we don't. So let's give it the care it needs, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so there you go. If that doesn't yeah. highlight video games, mm. I think we've harped on it quite a lot in this What Sold. Um, and a lot of it has come from Aiden. So a huge thank you to Aiden. There is more stock that we're buying off him as well because I'm slowly buying out his store. And I did say to him last week, let's just do video games and DVDs. And my goodness. The reason why I think they've come through so cleanly and fast for us is because we're selling the same category. So what I mean by that is we're buying them off Aiden in DVDs and video games, but our store is full of DVDs and video games. So what it does is when they get listed in, it helps all of the old stock come through and sell. Um, and if it is really good quality itself, then it can go quick too because it's a DVD video game store. I think if you were to try and bring in a, diff a completely different category, it wouldn't help, I don't think, as much. So that's why it's always more difficult, I think, to be an everything seller and why I'm more and more leaning into niching into a couple of categories. And media for will forever stay around for us, DVDs and video games. Shoes will always stay around for us as well. Um, and then we've got our like filler items like the clothing as well. So I think that's a really great way to structure your stores. When you first start out, pick everything. Just try and get a feel for how much you can buy in your, in your area, what you're seeing a lot of abundance in from a certain category. Uh, and then once you've got the opportunity to source it, see if it actually sells really well and consistently for you. And then see if you actually enjoy shipping the item off. If it's not an item that you put into a box, maybe you enjoy clothing because you can just throw it into a satchel and it's really easy to ship off. Find something that you get into a bit of a flow state with and then focus on that content, um, sorry, focus on that product and go deeper and deeper and deeper into learning all the nuances to it because every single category has its nuances and that's why I think when you're an everything seller, you don't get to go deep on too many categories. Um, and over time, Courtney and I have just really zoned into the few, the few that we do and we're having really good success as you've seen with the numbers over the last couple of weeks. So... A little bit of insight, a bit of info for you. Hopefully these sort of videos where we just kind of run around the garage um, are entertaining for you guys. Let us know in the comments if you enjoy this style of video. Courtney and I are always trying to work out what you guys want to watch. Mm. Um, so if you want us to continue with these run around top 10s in the garage, let us know. Um, but yeah, Courtney's going to ship all of this off now. I might have to go and find some more boxes for you, Courtney, yeah. from the looks of this, because I think we're going to list a, uh, put a few into boxes. Yeah. But... Um, shouldn't take you too long. So a couple of days ago, I put up a post on my Instagram and I asked you guys for a Q and A. I said, you could ask me absolutely anything and I would go ahead and truthfully answer it. But a lot of the questions that I got in that Q and A centered around Courtney and I's relationship. You guys wanted to know where it was at. She's obviously worked with me for the last 18 months. You see her in all of the videos, but what's actually the situation? What's actually going on between the two of us? And in this video, I wanted to give you the truth. I wanted to let you know where it sits on a relationship aspect of both Courtney and I. And, you know, when, we, when she first started, it was, I, I actually knew her. Um, we were friends prior through my best mate. Um, my best mate's sister-in-law is Courtney. Um, so I have known Courtney for quite a while and the fact that she was able to then become, you know, a co-worker was just brilliant. Uh, and then for the last 18 months, we have 100% naturally just grown closer. 
uh, in the sense of being able to work together, you know, 15, 20 hours a week, and she's the only person that works for me. Um, so I've, I've gotten a whole lot closer to her over the last 18 months, but it has only ever been a friendship, literally a friendship. It's been a working relationship. She is an employee of the business. I pay her tax, I pay her super, I pay her paycheck, uh, and she does a very, very good job working for me all along the while of being great friends as well. So I think that's why it's worked really well for the last 18 months. And at no point has it ever fallen into a case of it being a, a fling or a boyfriend, girlfriend situation. What are you guys out there saying? Is it your wife? Um, we never reply to these questions um, that we always get in the comments. We've always just left it, uh, let it go, I guess, and, and kept the intrigue there. But um, the absolute truth is that we are good friends and we work together and that's all it's ever been. Um, but a bit of an update that I do have for you guys is that after four years, after four years of being single, I actually ha now have a girlfriend. And I can say that as a bit of an announcement. A few of you guys mentioned uh, in the comments uh, a couple of videos ago at the flea market that you noticed that there was somebody filming. Uh, it was a fresh new set of legs that you haven't seen before. It wasn't Courtney. It was someone different. Uh, and people were cluing in on that. And um, she has come down, her name's Kate, she's come down to the flea market uh, and she's filmed a few videos. She's, I guess, super supportive um, of me trying to sell on eBay and make these YouTube videos. She's been right behind it ever since I first told her. It's been going on now for a couple of months. Um, and she's an awesome girl. She actually ran the marathon uh, on Sunday with me. And uh, we don't have too much footage, but there was a couple of clips there that we got um, post-race. but. Um, to see her finish her first ever marathon and to come in sort of around about within a couple of minutes of each other um, was a really cool special moment for us but um, it's been really hard to kind of I don't ever talk about this sort of thing on the channel um, I guess my personal life it's quite a weird thing to talk about on camera it's actually a little bit uneasy talking about it um, to so many people knowing that you're all you're all tuning in but um, I'm super super happy um, more happy than I've ever been in the last four years. And I think a large part of it is to do with having met Kate recently. Um, and she allows me to do my thing, allows me to make my, my YouTube videos and she's super supportive. She comes down, she helps out. Um, she just kind of gets it, which is really cool too. So I've asked her to be in the video. Um, she doesn't want to be in the video just yet. I guess everyone's always pretty nervous when you throw a camera in their face for the first time. So I do understand it, but she has she has alluded to the fact that she might be interested in jumping on camera down the line. Um, so I hope I can get her into a video sometime soon. I will be constantly pushing it. Um, but I thought I'd give you guys that, I guess, personal update. Um, yeah, super, super happy and can't wait to introduce you to her um, over the next, hopefully, days, if not weeks.